Hello and welcome back to Mark's House and Garden where as you can see I'm back on the garage conversion and we'll be back in the garden in the very near future but this is a fantastic job to be getting on with in the winter time. Now if you've been following my channel you'll know that I'm converting my double garage into living accommodation. There's going to be a bedroom, a music room, a gym, a small ensuite shower room and an office. And I'm sharing the journey on YouTube. Now, I'm just an amateur DIYer, but I am going through a planning application and I'm going through building regulations so that I can get this all signed off. Now, the planning application is pending, but I am getting on with some of the jobs that I can get on with without planning permission. For example, making this loft space a bit warmer. Now the building regs inspector from building control has been out and she's already told me that I need to insulate the floor, the walls and this loft space. This is what's known as a cold roof, what I'm doing, because the insulation is being retrofitted on the inside of the roof, which means that the roof on the outside will remain cold. And there's another way of doing it called the warm roof method, which is the opposite. Basically, the insulation goes on the outside. But that's very difficult to do if you're retrofitting. You would normally do that in the process of building your garage. So I have to have 150 millimetres or 15 centimetres of this hard, rigid insulation on the inside of this garage roof. That's regulation. This is 120 millimetres or 12 centimetres. So that's not enough. The, the drafters here in depth are 170. Regulations state that I've got to have a five centimetre or a 50 millimetre air gap above, up above here. So there's got to be an air gap above this of five centimetres. That's so that the air can go all the way over the top of this roof is called cross vented. So the air can circulate over the top and that helps to prevent condensation and damp problems, which could eventually rot these rafters. So in order to have five centimetres or 50 millimetres gap above this insulation, I've got to have 12 centimetres or 120 between the rafters. And then on the face of this, I will also have to have 30 millimetres or three centimetres of rigid insulation, which will be bonded to the back of the plasterboard. Here's an example of that plasterboard with insulation on the back of it. This isn't thick enough. This is only about 15 millimetres. I'm going to need double that thickness to make up the 15 centimetres or 150 millimetres. So I've nearly finished the inside of this roof now. And that's involved a lot of cutting. So in this video, I'm going to share with you everything I've learned about how to cut this. There's lots of different ways of cutting this. I've been using a handsaw and there's a technique and a skill to it. Now, if you were a professional and you were a full-time builder and you were doing this all the time, I'm sure that you would rig up some kind of jig or table what you slide these boards into and possibly use a, um, um, an electric handsaw or something to cut it. Now, I'm only doing this as a one-off job, so I'm just going to use, I'm going to persist with this handsaw. I'm finding it relatively easy, but there are some important things to know. In a moment, I'm going to go downstairs and cut a few pieces in front of your eyes so that you can see how I do it. And some of the things uh, that I've learned in the process of fitting all this. But whilst we're up here, some important points to talk about. You saw me hammering this in, or I wasn't hammering it in, I was using a, using a piece of wood and a mallet to, to bash it in. And that's good. It's friction fitted. And the reason it's friction fitted is because it's tight onto these rafters. And that's the objective really, is to have a nice tight snug fit between the insulation board and the rafters. If you have big gaps, or if you don't have right angles, if it goes off on a, on a skew, you'll end up with an air gap and that air gap will allow that cold air from behind to come through and it's called a cold bridge and it can bridge through and cause cold spots on the inside and those cold spots can be where condensation takes place. So in order to avoid that cold bridging 
we will try and make it as snug as possible. Making it as snug as possible requires several things, but two of those things are taking good measurements, accurate measurements on the width here between the rafters, and also cutting a good right angle down the edge so that when you do put it in, it's a nice snug fit all the way around. Now, I'm cutting it across, the boards are 1.2 by 2.4 meters, I'm cutting it across. So I'm having short pieces and that makes it easier, more manageable. The ends will always be right angles because that's how it's produced and you'll always have a nice right angle where it meets. So that's a nice snug fit automatically. And so it's my job to make sure that I try and cut a right angle down along the edge where it meets the rafter. Just to repeat myself, to avoid those gaps that the air can come through. Now, as a side note, there is this tape called Gapo tape that you can buy. And it's like an expanding foam filled tape and you wrap it all the way around. And when you knock it in, it expands and fills the gap. And it's very expensive. And you can avoid using that just by getting a good cut. So, whilst we're up here, I'm going to measure a piece and then we'll go downstairs and I'll show you how I cut it and then we'll come back upstairs and we'll install it. But before we go downstairs, in order to maintain that five centimetre gap above this insulation, which runs all the way over the top, I've fitted battens against the felt and I'll be showing you a picture of that now. There's some battens fitted all the way around at strategic places that stop that being pushed in too far. If it gets pushed in too far, it will reduce that five centimetre gap. And that's regulation. And I've got some of that on video so that when the building inspector comes, I'll be able to show her and say, look, there it is. So let's get measuring now. I cut a piece of wood, exactly the length of the insulation board, 1.2 meters. And the reason I've done that is it makes it easier for me to measure at the top. And so I'll take a measurement at the top and because these rafters are not always exactly parallel, I'll also take a measurement 1.2 meters at the bottom. So let's do that first. So I'll need my glasses for this bit because I can't see without them when I'm reading. So I'll stick them on. Up at the top here, we have got 54.5 centimeters. 54.5, 54.5. Four, five, fifty-four point five at the top. Now I'm going to go down one point two meters and measure again. Well, that's where one point two meters is there. And there, we've got fifty-four point three. So it runs in slightly. 54.5, 54.3, 54.5, 54.3. I'm going to remember those two measurements and take you downstairs and cut the strip that's going to go in there. 54.5, 54.3. So here is my pile of insulated plasterboard. That's the, the piece of timber that I measured, which is exactly the same width, which is like a yard stick. It's not a yard, it's 1.2 metres. Well, that gives me a guide when I'm measuring upstairs. I'm now going to measure in from this edge, 54.5, and in from that edge, 54.3. Then I'm going to put a straight edge across and mark it with a pen. So let's do that now. 54.5 on this edge. And 54.3. You might be thinking, does that two millimeters make any difference? Well, in my experience, it does. Because if it's two millimeters too big, it'd be very difficult to get it through the rafters. Now, you can use your saw when you get up there and hack away at it, but to get the measurements right in the first place, in my experience, is the best thing to do. This is a straight edge. You can see it's a straight edge by looking along it, but you can also see it's a straight edge by rolling it on a flat surface. As long as it doesn't wobble, you know it's a straight edge. 
So there's one mark at this end, one mark at that end, and we'll just score it with a pen all the way along. And that gives me, in theory, exactly the right measurements for that particular gap in the loft. So that's the piece I'm now going to cut. I'd obviously, I can't leave it there to cut it because I'll be cutting the board below. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull it forwards so that there's an overhang. That's my yardstick, so we'll put that to one side. Just make sure that it's well overhanging. Now I've got a piece of MDF board here so that I can kneel on that without putting dents into this side. Now, that's got to be a right angle. And it's a skill and a technique and a knack and you won't get it right every time. But my tip is, number one, do this on a very horizontal surface. So I'm doing this on the floor of my garage. That's horizontal. And by putting it horizontal that way, if I get the saw vertical by eye, I'm gonna end up with a right angle. Now, as I've already said, if you're a professional and you're doing thousands of these, you could rig up some kind of jig that holds your saw in place. I'm not doing it that way, I'm doing it by eye. And I've realized that by doing it by eye, over time, the skill gets better. Don't worry if you get a few of these wrong because you can always cut them smaller and put them somewhere else. The second tip really is the first cut, go away from yourself. Because if you pull it towards yourself, you'll pull this foil sheet off back towards yourself. So firstly, slice through there. Now, slowly but surely, following the line, keeping your eye on that blade, keep that blade vertical. And slowly, and it isn't difficult to cut. It's like putting a knife through butter. It's not hard. It's not like cutting wood. Slowly saw through it. Now, you might find that your blade has a tendency to run out one way or the other. So keep an eye on it. And if it does, so just adjust like the pressure to one side or the other. I'm doing this outdoors in a very well ventilated place. And I did put a screen up at the start of this saying that you should always do this with a mask on because it is quite dusty this. Um, so do wear a mask, a dust mask. I can't talk to the camera and wear a dust mask, so forgive me this time for not wearing one. Stay above the line of the blade so that you can check that it stays vertical. Now at this stage, I'm getting towards the end. I don't want to break it to break off under its own weight, so I'm going to be very careful here. As I get to the end, I'm going to start supporting the weight of this piece. nicely cut piece of insulated plasterboard. And I can see by eye. Got quite a nice right angle there. And you'll get that with practice. That will come, it's a skill and a technique. Let's take this upstairs now and see if it fits. So this is the moment of truth, is that going to fit snugly in there? I brought, I brought this tape up just to show you. This is um, foil, aluminium foil sticky tape, and that will cover all the joints and all these rafters. So that's another job I'll be doing when I finish this, but let's see if this fits. Sometimes they do need a little bit of persuasion. That's not a bad thing, because that means it's nice and snug. So. Push that in there like that. It's it's resting on the battens that are inside there. And let's see if we can just ease this in now. Oh, 
revert to my trusty mallet. There is a little bit of friction on these metal attachments. I'm using this piece of wood and the mallet, by the way, because if you were just to hit it with the mallet, it would absorb all the pressure and make big holes in it. This spreads the pressure. That is a perfect fit. There's a gap here. We'll put this underneath and we'll close that gap. So there we go. That is a lovely snug fitting piece of hard insulation board. And the reason it's snugly fitting is because I got great right angles and I was accurate with my cutting. So very little air will be able to come through and form cold bridges, which will then prevent any cold spots on the inside of this wall. And of course it will all now, all these gaps and cracks and joints Will be covered in this aluminium foil and then on top of that there will be even more insulation in the form of the insulated plasterboard hope you found that useful um, i think there were some value added learning points in there but if you're a professional and you want to add more value please do comment below i'll see you soon for some more garage conversion adventures bye for now <laughs>